Foggy Innsbruck in Austria. It's the final day of the BMW IBSF Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Cup Tour. And we round out our day with Bobsleigh action. Heading into the second deciding heat of the four-man competition, Martin Haven and John Morgan welcoming you back. John, we've got an interesting battle on our hands in this second heat. Well, it's some of the normal cast of characters. Justin Cripps didn't compete yesterday in the two man, but uh, this Canadian veteran who's battled on this track before, six best start, pretty good drive down the track. He went early in the heat, took advantage of some good ice. He's in the bronze medal position. Benny Meyer, local favorite, didn't do so well in the two man. He warned us he wasn't going to do well in the two man, but he's medaled in all three times. So we've had four man races this year. He's got himself in a position for a silver medal. So that's the other 21 sleds in the field, and then there's this guy. Okay, so there's been a total of 15 races so far this year, in two man and four man. He's won 11. He's finished second one of the time. His record in the previous year is pretty much the same. He's on a different planet on some, I don't know what he's on, Martin, but he has been putting together some unbelievable streak of wins. Yes, he sure has. Friedrich Meyer and Cripps are the top three in the World Cup in this truncated four-man season of only four races. Rostislav Gajtukovic should move ahead of Christoph Harfer to fourth place in the season standings in his rookie year. And Hansi Lochner, well, he had a podium last time out on his home track in Koenigsegg, but he struggled again here. He's been swapping between the more familiar Valner sled and an FES. Jungjin Suk and Timo Rona didn't make the cut for the second heat, so Italy's Patrick Baumgartner will be the first of our 20 sleds that go in this last heat of the World Cup. After this, John, we head to that man on the left, Francesco Friedrich's home track of Altenburg for the second World Championships there in a row. And it's going to be very interesting to see who comes out well. There's Benny Meyer. Benny with a really good run together. And Hansi Lochner could possibly creep into the medals for the second time this season. Oscars Melbardis and Oscars Kiba Manis both sliding for Latvia. It'll be interesting to see what world championship lineups the various different teams produce. Well, we're even more in the clouds now than we were in the first heat, aren't we? The visibility is relatively restricted. Affects the cameras more than the drivers, though. Patrick Baumgartner first off then, ahead of Austria's Marcus Treichel, Dominic Dvorak of the Czech Republic, and Roman Heinrich. Chris Spring, some of the later starters in the field, despite good starts and good speed, ended up with not much speed in the track, sagging down into the teens. And some of the early starters, Lam and Dean, for instance, and Yun Jong Won getting off early. The first two are in the top ten. Somewhere up there are the sleds. Final World Cup four-man race of the season. Patrick Baumgartner of Italy first to go in some murky conditions here in Innsbruck. 21st best start. They just made the cut. Martin Haven and John Morgan oh, the watching the last, yeah, last sleds of the season. He was out of the grooves. So you think there's a visibility problem here, right? And, you know, sleds going 75, 80 miles an hour. On most tracks, yes, but uh, the drivers, I don't think have a problem here. It's about your eyes, your hands, your memory. And this track's very forgiving, Martin, so I don't think visibility will be an issue. Yeah, hopefully not. Patrick Baumgartner will give us the first indication. They don't just send the sleds off. There have been two or three forerunners who have gone down, and the jury would have been very interested to hear what those drivers thought of the visibility. Because as well as trying to make the race equal and fair, they want to make it safe. And get our cameraman to look at his visor when he comes to a stop to see if there's anything on his visor. Now, if it's got a little bit of a spray, they had problems stopping the sled in the first try. And yep. they're not as bad here in the second run. But if his visor's got a little film on it, a little ice on it, then that's a safety concern. But let's look. I don't see anything. No, it looks, he looks okay. It doesn't yep. look like anything on there. They put that spray on there too, Martin. But I don't think, look at the way they came out of the grooves there. That's a, 
That's a mistake. But, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's some conversation being exchanged between the officials from the bottom to the top that his visor's not got any kind of uh, ice on it, so visibility's yeah. good. Let's make it happen. They use that rain X or something that they put on there. So exactly. Tricks, exactly right. Tricks of the trade. Marcus tried to have Austria second off, eight, uh, 19th place after the first heat, 300s ahead of Patrick Baumgartner, Marcus Gluck, Robert Exschlager, who makes his four-man World Cup debut at three. He was a late sub this morning, and Gregor Gaboniak then moved back onto the back handles. 22nd start of 22 sleds in the first heat, and the fact that he drove himself into the top 19 was an achievement, but he is on his home track. Martin, uh, having new people in the sled, we're gonna talk a lot about who's got what experience in the sled. And, you know, when you got people with not a lot of experience, it does show. Trichel was eighth here a couple of seasons ago, John, but has barely been fit since then, and that's not helping particularly on this track. Well, here's what he does. He doesn't have the good starts, but uh, 400s deficient, 200s deficiency. Now in the green numbers, and he knows where the Austrian shortcut is down here, like few people do. Finish 51.90. Well, if you look at his time, it's close, Martin. 51.90s, yeah. 100 worse than his first run. Only 200s in front of Patrick Bumgarner was like, come on. You know, yeah. There are going to be a lot of that, Martin. Wouldn't be uh, surprised to see a, a tie. This track, short 1,200 meter, 1,250 meter track. Well, ties are commonplace here. Marcus, he knows how to drive. You know, again, his eighth place finish three years ago. That's a mistake there. That's on the straightaway from Kreisel to Curve Eight. No mistakes allowed in that spot. Well, he's the leader now and has a six hundredths of a second advantage over Dominic Dvorak. He's got Dominic Suchi at two, Jan Sindelar at three, and making his debut in the World Cup, Jakim Prochatska at four. He's the man in the middle of the shot there. Dvorak, 13th best start. They had a bit of a mishap. Jan Sindelar's foot got caught on the right-hand side on the brake handle, and he was still trying to get his legs in the sled at turn one. Well, let's see how they correct if the fog will allow it. Get in, get down, that's very, very good. Martin, I brought it up in the first heat, I gotta bring it up again. Dvorak yesterday got awarded third place in the World Cup standings. He got a beautiful Globe trophy. But it's the first real time ever that the Czechs have succeeded in one of those top three in a World Cup. And I think of Jiri Demura in the 90s with his Pavel Puskar. They were so close to getting on the podium at races they never did. But Ivo Daladovic, who's the Korean coach now, he achieved the European Championships in 2008, one of the biggest upsets I've ever seen in the sport. So I just go out to these smaller nations to have some success. It's so great to see it, Mark, and I'm sure they were uh, pretty happy with what they did yesterday. And you know what? It wasn't a short season. It wasn't even a regular season. That's over a stretch of 12 races. And that shows how consistently good he's been all year long. So now if they can bring their four-man level up to that, then they will be very happy bunnies. Dvorak never ended up on, an, on a race podium. Few fourth places, fifth places, but his consistency was absolutely rock solid. I've been waiting for him to break through. A little problem there between six and seven. I've been waiting for him to break through, Martin. You know, he's the 10-9 sprinter, uh, you know, and he's been coming on. But this season, to me, he has he could have done better. I would have expected him to do better. But, uh, hey, he walked away with a globe. Congratulations to the Czech Republic. Pretty awesome for a small nation to achieve that. Yeah, absolutely right. And of course, there are really only two places on the podium, assuming that Francesco Friedrich always has one. And I think that's a safe assumption. 
Francesco Friedrich will come up last. Next is Roman Heinrich with Dorian Oteville, Lionel Lefebvre and Steven Mondanaka behind him. 17th, uh, 14th best start, 17th at the bottom. Their lead over Dominic Dvorak, 500. Yeah, Dvorak just put it down. He didn't have that start mishap. 519, there's the best start, you know, better, 100 better than Dvorak. So this should get out to six or seven hundreds, maybe. Three, four hundreds. If he did everything right. Yeah, there it is. So. No mistakes allowed. Dvorak flew in the bottom. I like his chances, Martin, to move out. Two hundreds. And remember, these sleds are going to be so close. It's dead heat at the moment. Red numbers. I think Dvorak's going to pick them off. He might pick a few more off here, too. Roman had a birthday yesterday. Top 10 finish. Not today. Oh, you heard the yell there. Fram breaks as soon as the driver yeah, gets across not gonna... the line. Wow! Difficult braking stretch, Martin. It's so different. The 76 yeah. Olympics when they first built this track. Braking stretch is way back before the tunnel starts. That was impossible <laughs> to break. I was a brakeman on this track a few times. It was. You got home at night, you felt it in your arms. Toughest braking yeah. stretch of any track on the planet, that's for sure. Yep. This wasn't good up here between six and seven on the wrong side of the straightaway. This is into eight. That looked okay. Easy to get down, hard to get stopped. Maybe that's one we ought to adopt. Is that a catchphrase? It's not, yeah, look, <laughs> yeah, look at the ice that the brakes dig into and it just goes flying up into the sled. Chris Spring of Canada is next up. His advantage over current leader Dominic Dvorak is eight hundredths of a second. Mike Evelyn, Mark Malacca, and Chris Patricia and his new young crew. They can do 17 in the first run, 20, 300s worse. New crew. Malacca, six years ago, came into the sport, Mark, or, uh, Martin, and broke his ankle in some start mishap and made a comeback a couple of years ago. He's back on the team as a football player, university adult, and a real estate guy. My old buddy Colin Bryce knows all about that. He uh, ripped his ankle off in a push start uh, in Monaco and uh, almost nearly separated his foot off his leg. That's the end of his career. Well, the Springer, who's a pilot here, but a pilot in his professional life. Not bad in the two-man yesterday. 200 lead is close. Clinging on, could be a tie. 700, he found the speed in the 72. Yeah, the Springer went 300s faster. Whoa, 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 whoa. Chris Things you don't think about in a bobsleigh for, for speed. I wonder how often they look at the brakes at any other track. Do they operate? Yeah, they operate. Oh, Here, they get, they get it's the much old, more uh, of a focus. They sharpen up the brakes for sure here, Martin. Mm -hmm. And little tap there, mistake. You know, skid, that's out of six to seven. This is eight to nine. Watch them climb. Now, can we probably can't see the runner tips too much here, but he comes off and... Pretty good transition. Good aerodynamics with the team. The Springer. Five sleds down, 15 to go. We are in Eagles. Chris Spring leads from Dominic Dvorak and Roman Heinrich. We are in the cloud here in Innsbruck in Austria. And after the first five sleds, Chris Spring leads for Canada. 200 faster than him in the first heat, Mihai Tenter with Raul Dobre, Ciprian Doroxi, and Christian Radu on the sled with him. And they'll like give away with those this young athlete. at the start. I'd like to see what this young athlete could do if he was in Friedrich's, Friedrich's sled or Friedrich's team. <laughs> because he always has oh deficient boy. starts. But uh, he, he knows how to maneuver these things down these, these ice canals. And the Romanians work 
They have so little to work with. They get so much out of every penny that they have invested in the team. Let's bring up the old track in Romania, Sanaya. So you can see Sanaya bobsled patches on some of their clothing. Romanian's last Olympic medal was in 68. He's hanging in there, Martin. Could be the leader yeah. by 1,500. It's good run, 51-59. They're happy with that. 1,400 really better. Good run. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Somebody yeah. on the brakes. I mean, oh, well, they've... Now, you know, let me tell you, I've seen people get hurt where they are now because they're walking in those yep. stupid little push shoes, and those aren't stable. That mat was got a little... Uh, ice on it so you can slip off that yep. that's where you can slip and turn an ankle and pull a groin but this young mihai can drive you know he you don't see much change of direction in the sled look at that line martin i mean aerodynamics we can see the brakeman back there so we'll give him a b minus but the, look at the how ginger look at the way you yep. can slip right here I mean, that, I more remember, people get hurt. A couple of years ago, there the couple years ago, Stillnev's crew rolled out of the final corner and slid all the way up into those buffers at the top on their side. That was that was not fun. Next up, Cody Baskew for the USA, 14th place after the first heat. He's got a 600s advantage over Mihai Tentea. Tentea in his first World Cup race here. Cody Baskew in his. Fourth, fifth World Cup start. 14th, 15th, and 22nd so far this season for the US four-man sled. And John, we think this is the last time we'll see Cody and the crew here in Europe. Yeah, they're not going to be at the World Championships next week, which is the first time in, I think, since the, after World War II. I mean, they didn't make a lot in the 30s, but pretty disappointing there. But uh, the team, uh, Blaine McConnell played football in Idaho. University of Idaho. Valdez was a track and field athlete. UCLA and Kyle Walk Wilcox played football pen. Um, decent starts. Yeah, got the best start of this heat so far. 400s lead. That'll be perfect down here. 400 still. Yeah. Should be the leader, Martin. Should hold this place against the Romanian. Yep. Oh, 200, 51, 63. So he'll do no worse than 14. Pretty good two-man yesterday, 10th place for Cody. Whitehall, New York. Look at them holding on. Yeah, there's the experience of Blaine McConnell at two, gets out immediately to stop the set sliding backwards. Transition. Mm, not. Perfect, but not bad. Aerodynamics, pretty good. Team sitting in that sled pretty well. And down here, let's see if there's any airborne. Watch the back end of the sled. Ooh, there's a lot of articulation there. But he crosses over pretty well. That's Carlo Valdez. Carlo slid with Holcomb here, so he's the veteran. Yeah, he of, did. Uh, yeah. of the team. Medal in Holcomb's last medal position here. Next up is Ivo de Bruyne, just Duma with Dennis Fenker and Janko Francic on the sled. Best result so far for Ivo, 11th in the season opener in Winterberg in January. His best result here, Ivo, a 15th place finish. He was 13th after the first heat, so this could be a personal best four-man race in Innsbruck for him. Well, he's got a decent start. Fifth best velocity down to a hundred. Ooh, big skid there. That's that nose of the sled went in the wrong direction, right where the doubles loose start comes in. That's why it's even up right now. Dead heat with Cody Baskew at the bottom. 200's back. Stake above Kreisel's going to cost him unless he's found a ticket to the Austrian shortcut down here. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be. No, he's going to drop back a couple spots at least, Martin. Oh, there you are, just setting it as a PB. He drops three places with 13, with 12 to go. So his best previous race here, a 15th place finish. He will be no worse than that. But they were looking a little Martin further forward, I think. 
See, he's screaming at himself. Yeah. This is up top. Speeds are slow. Look at that. You can tell the change of direction. But here, with the doubles loose, look at the sled is coming the wrong. I bet you he must might have hit there, Martin. That yeah. was the wrong line at an accelerated point that you need. Oh, can't do that up there. And he's got a lot of experience on this track. Well, Cody Bascu is our race leader. Next up is Oscars Melbardis. Last race here, December 17. This is his 55th four-man World Cup. Three World Cup wins here and a World Championships. He had a four-year, a full Olympic cy cycle, purple patch on this track. And that's because these guys used to be the start record of monsters. Him, Dalmas Jaskins, Arvis Vilkasta and Yanis Strenger. Monstrous starting crew. They're not there yet. No, nope, there's still other problems on the sled. They had the start time was 20 hundreds off of their start time track record from 2013. So this is the Olympic champion from 2014, the four-time gold medalist on this track, including a world championship, Latvian's first ever. I think it's easy to say he's in the twilight of his career, Martin, and uh, having him back here in 12th, 13th place, not the norm, not the normal we see with him. They're Hanging in there, 700 since. He's only 32 be the leader, but not old. by much. He's 32, Friedrich is 30. So there's a, a lot of difference between the two of them in uh, age and mileage. Not, not, not a lot in age, but a degree in mileage. There's no Bartis. bigger driver in the sport. Look at the size of this guy. Now, you know, yeah. he's not what he used to be, but that guy was 6'3", 250 pounds, runs like a deer. Not maybe as fast, good technique for the team, but watch the push bars don't come in. Look at the brakeman looking. You can see him looking. Come on. He's probably hitting those buttons and they're not coming down as he go through. Does he hit anything? Watch, he's still looking. Come on, go down. So they're not, so then he has to pull him in. That's aerodynamics. You don't think of it, but yeah. hundred here, hundred there on this track. No skid. Well, the Latvians have the lead. Next up, as we get towards the top 10, Brad Hall of Great Britain. Lawrence Taylor, Big T, joined by Luke Dawes this week, who finally managed to escape Great Britain. Couldn't get flights for two weeks. And Greg Cackett on the back, Greg, beating himself up yesterday, said he underperformed in their starts. They wanted to go up from fifth. They slipped to seventh in the two-man. But two solid starts in the four man. For sure. Taylor Lawrence, uh, Martin, British commando, huh? Yeah. Well, Brad Halls, pretty good yesterday. You know, won a medal earlier this year. 1,700 leads. Skeleton, you had 1,600 leads up there, and it wasn't safe from the bottom. 1,700 <laughs> yeah. above Kreisel, it's pretty safe. Unless Francesco is right in that next sled. <laughs> He's right Two in that. Up. He, he can move up two or yeah. three spots here. 51-45, yes, he 900 better. And Watch in the out. first heat, that would have left him in eighth place. So he was seventh yeah. in Koenigsee. That's the only four-man race he's been able to start. Had to pull out of Samaritz and Winterberg with uh, injured brakemen. And only three healthy athletes left to push a four-man. You know, they say in sport, sometimes you got to be lucky to perform at a high level. Mm -hmm. He hasn't had any luck this year, Martin. And it's just, yeah. you know, great that he's hung in there because... Most people would have packed it up on top of that with all the COVID situation. Yeah, he's hung in there. 
Well, if it wasn't for bad luck, they wouldn't have had any at all. But they, they lead with 10 sleds to go. Brad Hall's previous best on this track, a 12th place. He's already exceeding that. Well, because of the fog, we're not going to have the normal two-minute commercial pause, so we rock straight into Christoph Harfer. Tenth after the first heat, one hundredth ahead of Brad Hall. And John, the next two sleds are a hundredth ahead of him, and they're tied together. So we had four sleds covered by two hundredths of a second. It's a real battle. Yeah, and this former junior world champion, he's won a medal before. I think he's got at least one medal, right? Not about this trap. But, uh, uh, you know, he didn't have a very good first run, Mark. Very surprised. You know, he's got the tied for the best start with Hal, and they're so close. But Brad Hall went 19th, Hafter went 13th. So, ooh, another skid there, similar to what we saw Chris Spring do. World Cup best result for him last week in Koenigsegg, fourth place. He's got a, a medal from Segunda a couple of seasons ago in the two man. He's still in the lead over Brad Hall. That Ooh, is right it's down. Close. Yeah. It's close. Going to be right to the hundred. Oh, no! it is to the hundred. It's a top ten for Brad Hall. There's Greg Cackett going mad. Not a good best for Brad for Hall, Hopper. 12th place. Harper slips one. Well, four sleds covered by two hundreds. Not everybody's going to hold their position, are they? That's just too much of a coincidence. Martin, we were close to our first tie. Look at the skid. That's hard. Look at Rennie. Look at Rennie's piece. That's mm -hmm. when he was looking at that happening. How can you do that? That's what he's saying to his pilot. Yeah. But, you know, the rest of the rundown was pretty good. Uh, this wasn't perfect. Aerodynamics, A minus. I and that's where, you, shoulders back that's where there. you build the speed for the final corners, isn't it? Out of nine. It just went away. So, eight, nine sleds to go. Tied for eighth place. Alexei Stulnev and Lamin Dean. Stulnev off 11th, Lamin Dean off second in the race today. So, Stulnev. A seventh place in Winterberg, 10th in Samaritz and Koenigsegg. Just made the cut yesterday in the two man. Well, four sleds separated by two hundreds. <laughs> yeah. 5 11, great start. We saw that. Very good start. You know, he's better in the four man than he is the two man, Martin. Uh, I don't understand that because he's got so much experience. Of course, it's the start. He doesn't get any kind of start like this in the two-man. The two-man's the sports car. The four-man's the sport utility. The lead, 400. We saw 700s evaporate on the last sled. Let's see yeah. what this veteran Russian can do. And Brad Hall has the highest speed in the final Get speed heat. trap. So not going to do it. This is where Hall was not going to do it. One or two, two Seven back. Seven falls, two spots. <laughs> I think they're liking it. It's called PB's Martin personal best. Get the team yes. excited. Brad Hall's in the yes. territory he's never been before on this track. Stolnev. Stolnev slips a couple. Good start. That's tough. Yeah. yeah. Can't fault what he's done. I mean, ooh, that's not bad. I don't think he touched there. Out of curve nine. You can usually say watch the runner tips. Looks like the fog's going away a little bit. Can't tell he didn't make any mistake there, Martin. No. It is so tight, though. Just hundreds of a second in it. Zaitsev, Zaitsev, walking the sled down. Next up, well, we'll have a British leader at the end of this, but will it be Brad Hall or Lamin Dean? With Ben Simons, Joel Fearon, and James DeSolo, and as you touched on in the first heat, Joel Fearon ran the third fastest ever 100 meters time for a British sprinter. James DeSolo, the man at the back here, he's run the second fastest ever. Which makes me question. unbelievable velocity, too. 
good yeah. velocity, Martin, around this, out of their start time. In and down, 515. Boy, that's better than the first run. Only the third yeah. best velocity. That's surprising, because in the first run, of course, they went early, Martin. But Lamon, he went early. He had great ice to work with. He's already 10 hundreds back, Martin. It was so there was a mistake there on their the, load. The, yeah, sled into the first yeah, corner. Think there's was a sliding skid there. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, so that first second, right after they loaded in the sled, Martin, and it went away, he could fall back three or four spots. And the race, within a race, British at the bottom, British yeah. coming down. They'll be very happy at the bottom if they beat this sled. Good speed. Really good speed. And at the bottom, how close? Oh, my word, a quarter of a second. Yeah. Nobody's and lost a quarter of a second on this track. Two. Wow. Yeah, he lost all sorts of time up at the top. Mark. With that start, you know, with that start, the fourth best start, 515, he should have been within three or four hundredths. This is down below. Yeah, this Don't is off nine. Is the Look how that was. nine yeah, is late. such yeah. an issue for Lamin, isn't it? It's always an issue. He crashed there in the World yeah. Championships. He crashed there when he was looking like he was going to take a medal in the third heat. The His best ever World Cup World result here. here is seventh, and he was looking to move up to equal that from an eighth place first heat run. But he slipped back to fourth place with seven to go. And this is the man who started last in the field, Oscar's keeper Manis. He's got Dove Springs, Mads Mickness, and Chris Lindblad behind him. And John, you said you expected him to pick off another couple of sleds. And he might well do. Oh, He's yeah. got the A team pushing. They were the second fastest starting crew. He could be five flat here. 502 in the first run. Wouldn't be surprised. Five flat, 501. Four. 200 back still. Awesome start. Martin. And now watch him rock it down. Where you make all your time is between the second split and the third split. Friedrich's ridiculous. The, He's 13 seconds flat. The closest person to him is Meyer at 13 seconds, 11 hundredths. And that's only at 80 meters. And Friedrich is killing everybody up top. And look at the lead that Keeper Manis is opening up. He yeah. could still he sneak into the top five. At 17 hundredths over Brad Hall from the first heat, he's doubled that. Watch out. First he come in, maybe still challenge for a medal. Yeah. First four-man race of the season for Kiba Manis and across the line, 51-33 was kind of fifth best time in the first heat. Oh, that's not good for the alignment. Yeah. So when they put the brakes the on like that, the driver has no control of the steering. You know, when they come out of that open chute, that's why he couldn't get away from that. But how is this up top? Oh, a little drift there. Kreisel. I mean, his first four-man race of the year, Martin, had missed the previous three with injuries. But, uh, you know, no, when he was silver medal was on this track I... last year. Yeah, I don't know silver why he didn't last drive four-man. He, he raced all the two-man races. I mean, he was silver medalist yesterday. He He's raced every race in two-man. I think maybe they were just trying to give the other driver, Ralph Bershins, a bit more four-man experience before the World Championships. Well, he's not sure if that's good enough for a medal. What about Yun Jong Won, our Olympic silver medalist in 2018, with Kim Jin Su, Lee Gong Min, and Jun Kyung Woo behind him. Look like Won set off there with a the sled on his own almost. Yeah. He was so early on the front yeah. handle. His Olympic silver medal crew, none of them or in this sled. And, no. you know, I think Kieber Manis could have picked this guy off. The, Mr. Wan, who was the first guy down at the best ice to work with. 2,300 back. That's the start deficiency, and it's going to grow. He could fall two or three places, too, and Brad Hall could move up some more. Yeah. Well, 2,900 Brad Hall is off the back. Pace. Yeah, but look, he's 20, he's, he's 2,500 back already. And eighth best speed. Yeah, but he, he's going to 
He's going to stop that, Martin. He's going to keep it around 25, I bet. 24, here he comes. He'll go back. He'll yeah. be in second. You know, this is the Olympic silver Not medal. Much. This is eyes and hands. Oh, oh yeah. Five hundredths of a second. He's in second place. 2,200 slower. Everybody else is yeah. going 5, 8, 10, 12 hundreds faster. So that's the biggest deficiency from the first to the second run. He had the best ice to work with, Martin. Just doesn't have the yeah. starts. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Because he and Lamin Dean both dropped a huge amount of time on that second run, quarter of a second each. Yeah, but they went first and third off yeah. the top of the track in the first heat. Yeah, no, they yeah first and second. So it shows what what uh, the effect of that fresh ice was. They had more speed. Bingo, bingo. Mm. And then by the time Eva de Brown got down, third sled, it had gone. Oscar's keeper Manis leads from Yunjun Wan and Brad Hall, five to go. Final five sleds of the BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh season. Johannes Lochner in fifth place with Florian Bauer, Christopher Weber, and Christian Rasp, his regular four-man crew. But he swapped around sleds this year. Valner, FES, FES, Valner. Not sure he's still happy with what he's going to use in the world. 508 first run, 505 second run. Very disappointing weekend to date for this Johannes Lochner, who was in the podium position yesterday in the two men and made a big skid right here that threw away his medal chances and ended up in fifth. He medaled on this track last year. He won on this track a few years ago, Martin, and yeah. I'm sure he's not real happy with his performance to date. Now the winner in 2017, Perfect. that was the first of his four European Championship gold medal wins. Six hundred up only. Wow. Not by much. Barely yeah. got him. He was 500 to head after the first heat. He only matches Oscar's keeper Manis. Is that enough for a medal? I don't know. I'm not thinking so. He was 1500s, 1400s out of the medals. Well, fifth in the two-man yesterday, he'll be no worse than fifth, but quite possibly no better. He is better up here at between six and seven, where he made the mistake in the two-man yesterday, and he was a little sloppy in his first run. Start was 300s better. Curve eight, maybe tap that wall there, but Johannes, that was a better run than you had in both runs yesterday. Or the first his mask. <laughs> That's his weekend, can't find my mask. Well, yeah. if, if Lochner's got a break into the medals, this is the guy that could. Rostislav Gajtukovic with Mikhail Mordasov, Ilya Malik and Ruslan Samatov. It's only a six four-man World Cup. He was fourth and sixth in Winterberg in Samritz, ninth in Koenigsegg. But he took the bronze medal yesterday, fourth in the first heat. He snatched the bronze medal, and he is only 500 off the podium. He could do it again. What a weekend that would be for this young man in his rookie season. 505 first run, 504. Better start, second best velocity, which is fine. This is where you really have to be quiet with the steering. Almost body lean yourself in and out of these curves. 1200s, that's quite a bit of time. He needs to put, get in the clubhouse as the oh. leader. Ooh, that's a big right. mistake there. That's going to come Where's back down speed? to single digits, I would expect. Where is the speed? It's not about beating Lochner, though. That's what he wants. He's got to put down something no, very he's not special gonna do to it. beat Cribs. Not gonna he's do not going to do it. Not going to do it. He's going to go the wrong way. He does go the wrong way. Lochner moves up one. Top five run Little. for Rostislav Gajtukovic. He was fourth in Winterberg. That remains his World Cup best in just half a dozen yeah. four-man races. Had Everton with, you know, he had a 14, 1500s lead. And then that mistake, yeah. I think it was on the exit of Kreisel. Yeah, Rookie mistake. Out of six. There it is. This is and then 
Look, he's high above the lines, yeah. comes down a little bit, probably comes back up. Here's the beautiful pictures from our crew. Watch the sled flop here. Yeah, yeah you can't see much there, but look at the way that he taps before eight, Martin. So his bad exit, cross tack, hit the take on to eight. And watch the sled here. They, we've seen yeah. sleds roll over there, Martin, and that barrier sank yeah, yeah. him. Look at the back end. Again, when they put the brakes on him, they're so putting the brakes on so hard, there's no steering available. Still yeah. a great weekend for that young Russian. Three to go. Our top three in the World Cup standings. Justin Cripps, Benny Meyer, and Francesco Friedrich are going in that order. They are the first three sleds after heat one. Cripps looking to move up. Yeah, he just moved up at his start time. 5.12 to 5.10. Needs to do that. You know, he's got quite a bit of lead on Lochner. You know, he should be out 12, 1500s here. It's only six. Yeah. And Lochner had a better start. So he stopped the bleeding. Six to six. That's a good sign. Perfect lines. He'll be in a position to win a, at least a bronze medal. And so far, yeah. he's pulling away. And that's a beautiful exit. Pulling away more. This could be a better than a bronze medal. This could be a silver medal at this pace. Yeah. Grabs a good run, 51-29. Yeah. Happy Graham Richardson. Experience on the team. brakes in the back. Ben Coquell. Yeah, they're loving that. That's their third medal in four four-man races this season. Silver bronze, fifth place last week in Koenigsegg. And now he's happy with that. This four-man team is on fire, the two men. Yeah, and they're thinking, medals, medals, medals. Start, good efficiency here. In and down, push bars before the opening. Look at the aerodynamic profile. You don't see anybody else back there, even in the fog, but you don't see anybody. So A-plus on their aerodynamic profile of the team. And Cripps, one of the veterans in the field. Yep. 67th World Cup start for Justin Cripps. He's the leader with two to go. Benny Meyer, 39th World Cup start. And with a lead of just six hundredths of a second over Justin Cripps. Dan at Moldovan in for Sasha Stepan, making his 34th World Cup start. Stepan did the first heat. Marcus Sam and Christian Hubert remain on the sled. So Dan at Moldovan didn't race today, this morning in the first heat. He raced last week. 503. Cripps went one, 200 better. Benny Meyer went 100 slower. Betty Meyer had the best splits, though, from the start clock to here, 5-11. The first tee Crips at 13-24, excuse me, 13-11 to 1324. Let's see what he does here on his home track. 2900s up! Wow! He's looking for now a the silver Austrian medal. He's up looking, up top. looking for a second place in the Crystal Globes. Crystal Globes goes to the top three in each of the categories at the end of the season. The key to his That's success this year, Martin, start times. His start times have yes. so improved. That's why he's the leader here. 51 he beat only at the start by hundreds. Only 600 slower, John, than his first heat. But Martin, he beat Cripps by 14 hundredths at the start over two heats. That's 42 hundredths at the bottom. But Benny Meyer, great season for him. It's all about right here. He's a great student of the game. He's great with taking a part of his, taking care of his own equipment. And they put together some great start teams, the Austrians. And that's why he's medaled in every race this year. And going to Altenburg, Martin, he's got to be one of the favorites to medal up there, too. Great and aerodynamic profile from the team. Even when they have to swap one of the brake men between the heats, they are still the second fastest crew off the start. But here is the fastest crew. Francesco Friedrich, Torsten Margis, Candy Bauer, and Alexander Schuller. 
Their start in the first heat, 4.97 seconds. The start record, 4.93. That will be their first target in this run. It's going to be tough in these conditions. 4.95, 200 wow. away. But again, wow. a bit of a wobbly you know, you load. Think all, he needs, all he needs is a conservative run. Do they go conservative? No, they go for the... <laughs> metal to the metal, and uh, you know, they go after the track record. And again, we've had 15 races so far in Bob Sutton this year, two and four. He's won 11, excuse me, 14 and 15. He's won 11 two man. He's won all of the four man of, races. Yeah, so he's lost yeah. one time, and he's winning by yeah. such incredible margins. 2200s here. Well, this is normal. He's going to win by two tenths. But in the two-man yesterday, he won by five tenths. Yeah. Okay, Mark, pretty good season. What do you think? 15 out of 16 races. Yeah. He's, and he was second the other race. And there's two more to come. And they're on his home yeah. track. And, you know, this crew are fast and healthy. They have a spare for Big. when Torsten isn't, uh, you know, he's swapping Torsten and Alexander Schuller in and out of the two-man, so he's got the best okay. starting team on the planet, and in front of well, them is the best driver in the sport. Well, you know, I would put him right up there as one of the best athletes in the front seat. He's yep. a decathlete. You know, never well, hurt. Now, That's what I can't believe. He just is so, yeah. stays so physically fit, which is such a struggle to go through season. I mean, they've been dry land training in August and September. Then they yeah. start on the ice in October. And here we are. The guy's still like so he was you, the first day of the let season. Me tell you about, let me tell you about his athleticism. I was told last week by somebody who knows that Friedrich outperforms each of his brake men on each position on the sled. Friedrich is a faster oh. brake man than his brake men. He wins from Benny Meyer, Justin Cripps, Hansi Lochner, Rostislav Gajtukovic, and Oscars Kiba Manis. Uh, a best ever World Cup result here for Brad Hall in eighth ahead of Christoph Harfer and Alexei Stulnev. And Francesco Friedrich sweeps the four man season, four races, four wins. Benny Meyer, Two bronze, three silver, Justin Cripps, a silver, two bronze, and a fifth medal position. So that is your finishing order after the final race of the World Cup season. And don't expect anybody to be getting that close to Francesco Frugic in the World Championships in two or four man either. He's been absolutely a class act all year and continues to be the benchmark by which all others are judged. The World Cup champion in two-man and four-man again. And an all-but perfect season sport? across both disciplines. Is there any other athlete in any other sport that is dominated like this guy has for the last quad as we go into the World Championships on his home track next week? Yeah. I mean... You know, and he, and he does it, no arrogance, just pays attention nope. to the details. <laughs> He's the nicest person to the guy who finishes last as the guy who yep. finishes second. So, I mean, he is so, some sports person. Crystal Globes go to Francesco Frugic, Benny Meyer, and Justin Cripps, the top three in the season, ahead of Lochner, Gajtukovic, and Harfer. Just to remind you, Gajtukovic in his first World Cup season. A very impressive year for him, and he is hugely uh, promising for the future of bobsledding in Russia. Well, there you can see how everybody else racked up. And the two Swiss, Nicole Vogt and Simon Friedli, absent for the last couple of race weekends. They're in Altenburg training up. They also finished in the top six in the uh, two-man World Cup ranking, so lots of potential there. Well, that's it for the BMW IBSF season for men's bobsledding. The women's race remains here to round out the weekend in Innsbruck. Join John Morgan, me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew for all the action. Next time we see the men, it will be the World Championships in Altenburg.
Hardly wait. We'll see you then. Bye for now.